Hi there. Welcome back to our Sweetie Heels 2020 speaker interview series. All of our speakers have amazing stories to tell and are great resources for anyone who wants to innovate in healthcare 3D printing and bioprinting. And the intention behind these interviews is to decrease the distance between our speakers and the audience before 3D Heels 2020. And you can think of them as icebreakers for you by us. It's a pleasure to have uh, Dr. Gustavo uh, Mendonca today uh, from University of Michigan. How are you doing? Good. How about you? Doing well. Uh, truly excited to have you as one of our speakers at 3D Heels 2020 Global. Uh, today, I'm just going to ask you a couple questions, uh, starting Good. with how did you get started with 3D printing? Oh, I started with curiosity to see how how this new technology works, but I see very great benefits in being able to rapidly fabricate some appliance, some um, printing of impressions that we take from scanning them out. And hopefully in the future, we'll be able to print things that will be much more finished and long lasting to stay in, in the mouth than what we have right now. Mm -hmm. What are, what are those, some of those possibilities that, you know, we'd hope to see, you know, in the course of our careers uh, or even further? As a restorative dentist, we, at this time in printing, I'm focusing in printing dentures or printing crowns that right now those materials are much more temporary than long lasting, but they are very effective for an emergency situation or doing something very quick on someone has a broken tooth or needs some kind of a bite splint or mouth guard that usually will take some days to, to have it made if it goes to a, to a lab. Mm -hmm. And at the 3D Heels conference in uh, next month, um, what do you hope to share with, you know, in a few words, what do you hope to share with those participating? Yeah, I'm sharing my experience where we've been using a lot of intraoral scanning to obtain data from from patient's mouth, and then from there we can print the planning to present to the patient how the, the teeth will look like in the end. We we do a lot of printing for uh, guided surgery for for implants. We do a lot of printing for temporary and partial dentures for immediate extractions and how in a matter of 15, 20 minutes, you can have a prosthesis designed and ready to, to print and then in, in a few more hours, have it ready for the patient doing a, a more length procedure. And, you know, in, in addition to printing prosthesis, you also have a, you know, a, a truly a, a biological background. Where do you hope that 3D printing can facilitate dentistry in that regard? Yeah, that, that would be very helpful it's already starting for printing scaffolds, grafting, because when we lose teeth, we have to not only replace the teeth, but we also have to replace the bone and be able to print scaffolds that will help cells to grow back and, and form new bone. And I also see a lot of people starting to think and, and produce 3D printed metals and printing implants mm -hmm. that can also allows us to customize the shape. So instead of having to grow the bone where we need, we can also maybe take the implant, make the shape we need to fit mm -hmm. the, the, the need we have, which is also very exciting. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and it just seems, you know, uh, you originally stem from Brazil. We will have Maira from Brazil. Uh, you know, Brazilians in 3D printing, I mean, a truly, you know, uh, a number of leaders emerging from this area. Is there anything special in the in the food, you know, in the food or the interest or the care? Um, wh why do you think that's the case? Well, I think people is trying to make the technology useful because a lot of times when you have to use other ways, sometimes it comes in, in, in specific countries, things are more extensive. And if you have one technology that becomes more affordable and has the possibility to allow people to do things customized and be more affordable. I think that's why the, all the digital dentistry and 3D printing has becoming very, very popular and people are jumping in more and more in Brazil. Mm -hmm. 
And for, you know, as a professor yourself, um, for students today, how do you think they should get their start understanding about additive manufacturing and these instruments um, and these tools that can make a difference? Yeah, in the dental school, that's still a little slow because I mean, the faculty is still being trained as well. It's not every day for everybody, but a lot of the dental schools are starting digital dentistry initiatives and they are not only putting the intraoral scanning and, and the milling, which is the um, subtractive manufacturing, but they're also implementing more and more of the additive manufacturing. And to explain to students how a 3D file works and how you have to prepare from scanning the mouth to make a model that you can print and using different printers, what you're gonna get. That's part of the courses that are beginning. I'm actually starting an elective course next week in, in, here at the University of Michigan to talk about that. And I have about 60 students enrolled. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much for your work, your interest in being part of 3D Heels. We look forward to seeing you on our, on our panel in June, in June. I'm very excited to, I was, I was hoping to go to San Francisco, but I'll settle for online for now. I was, I was really hoping that we'd be able to meet in San Francisco. It looks like at some point I might have to come to you to check out all of yes. your tools. God is open. <laughs> Take care.